Just that we would like to start with the ministerial statements from the Minister of Youth. Thank you very much. Clerks at the table, take note. Government business, item B, ministerial statement. The Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport to present a statement. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport. Madam Speaker, I am deeply honored and grateful for this opportunity to deliver a statement in this August House to highlight the overview and current implementation status of key infrastructure projects for youth and sports in Malawi. Madam Speaker, the overall mandate of the Ministry of Youth and Sports is to contribute to sustainable national development through the provision of youth and sports services. This mandate of the ministry is delivered through two technical departments, namely the Department of Youth and Department of Sports. The two technical departments are therefore responsible for facilitating the development of policies, programs, setting standards and guidelines, resource mobilization, partnership building, monitoring, evaluating and reporting all activities. Now, Speaker, this ministerial statement seeks to provide the August House and the nation with an update of the current implementation status of youth and sports infrastructure projects, which includes the construction of the Mzuzu Youth Center, the Griffin Sayenda Indoor Sports Complex, the National Aquatic Complex, and the construction of two stadia in Blanta. <laughs> Madam Speaker, Youth and sports programs are guided by the youth-centric Malawi 2063 and its 10-year implementation plan, which recognizes the youth role in driving the country's social economic development. At subsector levels, youth programs are guided by the national youth policy while the national sports policy guides sports programs. Youth and sports subsectors are also guided by the National Youth Council Act number 22 of 1996 and the Sports Council Act number 10 of 1974, respectively. At global and regional levels, the youth and sports subsector programs are fully aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals, the African Union Agenda 2063, the African Youth Charter, the Commonwealth Youth Program, the Comesa Youth Program, and the SADIC Protocol on Youth Empowerment. Madam Speaker, the Minister of Youth and Sports, with Malawi government resources and support from development partners, is implementing several programs in the youth and sports subsectors aimed at improving the well-being, productivity, and participation of young people, as well 
as improving mass participation and excellence in sports at all levels. Madam Speaker, the Department of Youth in the Ministry was established in 1983. The functions of the department are to coordinate the youth development subsector by setting the youth development agenda in line with government priorities, developing flagship programs, generating evidence for policy and programming, setting standards, and substantive reporting, including monitoring and evaluation. The August House may wish to be informed that my ministry is implementing the following youth infrastructure project. Madam Speaker, the construction of Muzuzu Youth Center commenced in the 2022 to 2023 financial year. This facility will provide space for the youth to develop different skills such as sports, vocational, and life skills. Unlike Blantyre and Lilongwe, Muzuzu City does not have a youth and sports friendly facility. The scope of the work in this project includes a three story youth center comprised of an administration block, a library, and classrooms, but also a netball court, a basketball court and a football arena. The construction of the substructure has been completed and thus the physical progress of the construction is estimated at 30%. Madam Speaker, in the current financial year, the project has been allocated 1.5 billion Malawi Kwacha which is not enough to bring out substantial progress. As it stands, the project needs additional resources if it is to be completed by the end of the fiscal year. Let me now go to sports development. Madam Speaker, the Department of Sports was established in 1972 to promote Malawian national identity and unity in diversity by promoting and managing sports and recreational activities for educational, posterity, and poverty reduction. One key factor in the development of sports is infrastructure. In this regard, the government through my ministry, the Ministry of Local Government and the Ministry of Education is constructing and managing sports facilities at school, community, and national levels. The Ministry of Youth and Sports is mainly responsible for national facilities. At the same time, the Ministry of Local Government is responsible for district and community facilities. And the Ministry of Education takes care of school sports facilities. There is good progress in the development of sports infrastructure in the country because facilities are being constructed across the country. One exciting development is that the private individuals and organizations are investing in sports infrastructure in the country. Some of the private facilities are Champion Stadium in Doha and Idimba Stadium in Mchinji. The Ministry is supporting public and private facilities in the sector by routinely inspecting them, training stadium managers, both public and private, 
as one way of promoting good management practices, efficiency, and effective service delivery. Allow me, therefore, Madam Speaker, to report that the Ministry is currently implementing three key sports development projects. The construction of the Griffin Sayenda Indoor Sports Complex, the construction of the Aquatic Complex, and the construction of two stadia in Planta. Let me now talk about the Griffin Sayenda Indoor Sports Complex. Madam Speaker, the construction of the Griffin Sayenda Indoor Sports Complex temporarily stalled in 2022 at 80% due to cost overruns. This project is expected to provide the netball fraternity and other sports disciplines with appropriate codes for sports development. The facility was used to host the African Union Region 5 Youth Games, December 2022, which are mandatory to promote sports development and regional unity in Africa. Madam Speaker, the project cost changed during construction due to changes in the scope of the work and inflation. This resulted in an increase in the total estimated cost from 7.8 billion Malawi Kwacha to 15.7 billion Malawi Kwacha in early 2023. An addendum was submitted to the Public Procurement and Disposal of Assets Authority, PPDA, for approval. And the PPDA, through the Ordinary General's Office, engaged a technical consultant to audit the project for PPDA to decide on the way forward given the magnitude of the additional cost. The PPDA finally granted an objection to the project addendum in July 2024 and gave the ministry a go-ahead to sign the addendum with the contractor and restart the project. Madam Speaker, my ministry is working closely with the Department of Buildings to negotiate with the contractors to expedite the processes to recommence the construction works. We are therefore hopeful that resources will be made available to start and complete the project by the end of the financial year. Madam Speaker, let me go to the construction of the aquatic complex. I wish to report that the actual fiscal progress of the construction of the aquatic complex is at 63%. This project is part of the master plan to reconstruct and renovate the Kamuzu Institute for Sports into a sports village. Through this project, an Olympic standard swimming pool, a gymnasium, and an administration block are being constructed. The facility was also used to host swimming competitions during the Region 5 Youth Games in December 2022. Madam Speaker, similarly, this project was also affected by cost escalations due to changes in the scope of the work and instabilities in the macroeconomic environment. The initial revised total cost moved from 8.2 billion Malawi kwacha to 14.2 billion Malawi kwacha. And that is without taking into consideration the latest inflation. This again led to the submission of an addendum to the Public Procurement and Disposal of Assets Authority PPDA in June 2023 for approval. Similarly, the PPDA requested a technical audit for this project to ascertain the price escalation. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to report that the PPDA finally granted an objection to the project addendum in July 2024 and gave the ministry a go ahead to sign the addendum with the contractor to resume construction of the works to complete the project. Madam Speaker, my minister is also working closely with the Department of Buildings to negotiate 
with the contractor to expedite processes to recommence the construction of the works. We are also hopeful that resources will be made available to restart and complete the project by the end of the financial year. Madam Speaker, let me also talk about construction of Sochi and Zingwangwa Stadia in Blantyre. Madam Speaker, Blantyre does not have enough standard football stadia. At the moment, about five big Super League teams scramble for the Kamoso Stadium as a home ground for training and competitions resulting in further deterioration of the facility and costly maintenance for government. This then motivated the Malawi government to construct two smaller stadia of capacity between 15,000 to 20,000 seats to increase the quality of sports infrastructure in Blantyre and promote good standards in sports in the country. Madam Speaker, construction of Sochi Stadium commenced in 2019. However, the project was suspended in 2020 and it was actually removed from the PSIP largely due to the manner in which it was initiated. At the time of the suspension, the project was then at 75% level of completion. And after consultations, the construction of such a stadium was reinstated into the PSIP in the year 2023 to 2024, financial year, and was allocated funding by the Treasury amounting to 2.2 billion for both Sochi and Zingwangwa Stadium. The funding was used to pay out certificates for areas that had accumulated by the time the project stalled in 2020. Works for the construction of Sochi Stadium are expected to restart once all contractual procedures are finalized this year as a contractor is agreeable to continue and finalize the remaining works. We are hopeful that resources will also be made available to restart and complete the project by the end of the financial year. Zingwangwa Stadium. Madam Speaker, similarly, Zingwangwa Stadium commenced in 2019. The project was also suspended in 2020. It was removed from the PSIP, and at the time of suspension, the project was only at 5% level of completion. Madam Speaker, as described above, the project was allocated funding by the Treasury in the 2023-2024 financial year, just like the Sochi Stadium. And similarly, the allocated funding was used to pay out for areas that had accumulated since the suspension of the project in 2020. The Zingwangwa contractor, China Civil Engineering Company, Madam Speaker, has agreed to terminate the contract with the minister due to a huge anticipated revised cost warranting a fresh tender. We have thus a task before us to procure another contractor to continue with the project. I would like to clarify that considering that the two stadia are being constructed using public funds, the two proposed stadiums 
users will be given the facility to use and manage on behalf of the government. Ownership of the facilities will thus remain with the Malawi government. The Malawi government will sign a special agreement with the teams on how the two facilities will be effectively managed. Madam Speaker, I would like to assure the House that the Malawi government, through my ministry and indeed other key players, such as the National Youth Council of Malawi, NICOM, and Malawi National Council of Sports, is doing everything possible to ensure that youth livelihoods and sports standards in the country are improved through provision of quality youth and sports services. I am confident that Malawi will continue to succeed in most sports and youth development undertakings. Madam Speaker, lastly, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to you for allowing me to address this August House and the nation at large on the matters that are key in the operations of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of uh, Youth and Sports. Number members, as per our, uh, yes, you, I'm sure you already know that you only allowed questions and not debate. Yes, Kasungu North, Deza North, Machinga East, uh, Zomba Central. Um, then Blanta North. Let's start with this and then I'll take another round. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for granting an opportunity to the people of Kasunguno to ask uh, the Minister of Youth and Sports uh, three questions. But before that, I don't know, Madam Speaker, if, if it is in order because. Uh, one of the commissioners here was telling me to ask the speaker if uh, he can go to Bingo Stadium and greet Sadio Mane on and come back. But I should accompany him before 3 o'clock. I don't know if that is in order. Today, Burundi is playing Senegal, so that's why you are asking that. Uh, the questions to the minister, the first one is to do with the, the Griffin Sayenda Sports Complex as well as the aquatic stadium. Can it be possible for the government to allocate money for one project? We have got these two projects, big projects in the city of Lirongwe, but uh, Kasungu North is asking if it is possible for government to allocate money for one project and we finish that project, then we we'll go to the other project because it seems sharing of these resources is becoming a problem we share little resources to Griffin Sayenda Sports Complex as well as the, the Aquatic Stadium, but we are not finishing uh, those two projects. So for Kasungu North, uh, we are thinking if we can share, I mean give the money to maybe first we start with the Griffin Sayenda Sports Complex, then later on we do the Aquatic uh, uh, Stadium. Uh, the second issue is about the two stadiums in Blanta. It pains me to hear that a project that will, uh, started in 2019 up to now, uh, there's uh, no tangible progress. I don't know if uh, government can lose anything if the government decides to donate those stadiums to the teams that the government said will be using, uh, will be leasing those stadiums. Let's say we donate those teams to uh, Bullets, I mean uh, the stadiums to Bullets, it's more like we're giving them the, the land and what, uh, whatever works we have done uh, so far. So uh, we are asking whether it is possible uh, to donate those land or the, uh, the stadiums to the two teams, Bullets and Wanderers. And finally, on infrastructure, yes, there has been a mention of Mzuzu Youth Center. Uh, we should thank the government uh, of... Uh, 
uh, Dr. Lazarus Makate Jaguera for making this project to be a reality now because uh, it started a long time ago, but now there's that uh, tangible progress. But the question is, in, st uh, in terms of uh, a national stadium, the northern region has no stadium. What are the government plans uh, for the people of the northern part of Malawi uh, if, uh, in terms of uh, having a national stadium that can also host the Malawi national football team that I'm sure tomorrow is going to beat Burkina Faso in Mali. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for allowing the people of Dezanov to ask the Honorable Minister of Sports. And uh, I should be so thankful because uh, the Honorable Minister at one time actually visited my constituency and he left a very good mark uh, when he participated in the launch of uh, the football uh, league that I was setting. So the people of Mayan are still so thankful. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the question from the people of uh, Senior Chief Tambala and Senior Chief Chauma is uh, to ask the Honorable Minister on the ideology of maintenance of our stadia. It has uh, been uh, discovered, Madam Speaker, that uh, uh, the only facility that has uh, been qualified to host international matches it is actually the Bingu National Stadium. But uh, over the years, it has uh, faced numerous challenges in terms of maintenance costs. Uh, it has been realized that the money allocated for its maintenance, in most of the times, it's not enough. And um, the ones uh, responsible to look for the maintenance actually struggled last minute, and we almost lost the qualification this year uh, for to host these matches. So I was um, of the idea to say, um, somebody told me an idea to say, is it good to have seven trousers, which each one has a hole, um, it's torn, uh, rather than having one trouser which is uh, well maintained and looking smart. So I wanted to say the more we increase some of this steady, while we are sometimes failing to maintain the only one that is uh, the best for us, um, I found that as a challenge. So what are the plans that the ministry have concerning the maintenance of Bingo National Stadium? in terms of uh, allocation of funds for maintenance. That facility, Madam Speaker, costs a lot to be maintained, and it really drains almost the money which were, um, it would have uh, been used for the other stadiums. So I, I am appealing or asking the ministry to, have, uh, uh, to maintain the one trousers that we have Rather than to have seven trousers with the holes on the knees, um, it doesn't sound well there for us to look more smarter. And, and we are happy that uh, Burundi is using the Bingo National Stadium as their home ground because uh, it's well maintained. So let's be proud of that and uh, yeah, it's an appeal for the maintenance costs and what plans the ministry has. The second question, Madam Speaker, it is about... Um, the Zimbangwa and the Sochi Stadium. I, I would like to ask the minister, because of my clinical background, Madam Speaker, sometimes my questioning and my understanding gets stuck towards that field. So we used to understand that this stadia were being marketed using the name of Big Bullets and Wanderers Stadium. I wanted if the minister can allow us to use those names by giving them some technical application. One, the generic name will be Sochi and Zingwangwa. Two, the trading name, the trading name, I'm borrowing from the pharmaceutical language, the trading name which we normally use when selling a product should still be maintained as um, 
bullets and, uh, and uh, wanderers stadium. In that way, then we could be communicating easily because the trade name is used for common communication, while the generic name is used for technical experts or technical language. So I wanted, if that is possible, that in terms of our communication, since the government is already committed that after the construction is over, they shall um, give this stadia to the same teams that we are talking about. So I wondered if we could borrow that nomenclature from the uh, pharmaceutical field where you have a trade name and uh, a generic name. Remember, questions, 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 please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, so... Thank you very no, much, Madam yes. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so let me finish on the Kamuzu Stadium. Finish, finish. Uh, Madam Speaker, Kamuzu Stadium is also a worry. Is uh, the ministry having any other further plans to have Kamuzu Stadium being maintained to the status that it can qualify to host international matches? That's my question concerning Kamuzu Stadium. How can it be maintained, or has there been a feasibility study to see how much it can cost to come up with the, uh, the standards that it can cost? It's, it's almost the... close to five minutes, please. Thank you, Madam Thank Speaker. You. Let me stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Majinga uh, East, do you have the floor? Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for recognizing the people of Majinga East constituency. To ask a question to the Honorable Minister responsible for youth and sports, uh, I heard him very well, clear, when he, uh, the Minister was uh, presenting the statement, and the Minister did say that uh, the Minister is responsible for, among other things, uh, district facilities. Uh, I would like to ask the Honorable Minister uh, that he, in, uh, at Machinga, uh, we, we do have a land available and the, if we, we have also prioritized the issue of stadium in our district development plan. I wanted to find out if there is any way that the ministry could have, could have supported the people of Machinga as a district so that we should have a, a, a stadium on our own because currently uh, I think it's only Majinga, I don't remember any other district apart from Majinga, which is uh, operating with, without a stadium. So is there any way that the minister will come and support us to have our own stadium as well? Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Majinga. East Zomba Central. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, for according the people of Zomba Central an opportunity to ask a question to the Minister of Youth and Sports. Uh, first of all, let me thank him for ably presenting the ministerial statement that he has just delivered. My question is about Zomba Stadium. This stadium, Madam Speaker, the much touted Zomba Stadium was supposed to be opened or to be operational in 2023. December of 2023, and then it was, the opening was postponed to January 2024, and we are in September 2024. I was wondering, when will this stadium be operational? As someone who is very passionate about football, the minister himself, in the absence of Zingwangu and Sochi Stadia, the people or the teams from Blantyre would be able to use Zomba Stadium when it's operational. So I wanted to ask the minister, when will Zomba Stadium be opened? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Zomba Central. Honorable Minister, are you rising? Yes, Right Honorable Speaker, on uh, a point of order. Yes, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, the ministerial statement that has been presented is uh, from the Minister of uh, Youth and Sports. But I just wanted to find out if we are proceeding procedurally if uh, we start entertaining questions that relate to the Ministry of Local Government rather than the Ministry that presented the 
ministerial statement because uh, council stadium or stadium um, might fall in a different ministry, different from the ministerial statement that has been uh, presented. I just wanted to find out if the questions are indeed in order. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Minister of Trade. Indeed, as per our rules, uh, we're supposed to ask questions on the response given by the Minister. Uh, but obviously, Honourable Minister of Trade, of course, there's a bit of an overlap. Uh, there's, there's an overlap between, the, we're talking of issues to do with um, stadium, but I think uh, that we should bear at the back of our mind that the stadiums that maybe we're talking about are under the local government and not necessarily Minister of Sports, but uh, maybe it's just that the hope that the Honorable Minister of Sports would still maybe have some knowledge of what is happening, but I think it would be unfair to pin it down because it is under Minister of Local Government. Thank you. Bangochimaki, be your eyes on a point of order. Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I think uh, in the Minister's statement, it, we were guided very well that he, he handles two departments, and one is Department of Youth, the other one is Department of Sports. So I don't think we could be limited on the sports infrastructure. Uh, that we could be asking since the Ministry handles sports and the Zomba Stadium is going to be used for sports. Thank you, uh, Right Honourable Speaker. Mr. but that's why I said that there is an overlap, which if we're lucky, the Honourable Minister can have some information, but maybe he might not have to the great detail uh, the technical side, because obviously that is under another ministry. Thank you. Uh, there was Blunt uh, North. Minister can respond. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. My first question is uh, is uh, about the ownership of the two stadiums, uh, one for Nyasa, Big Brace, and the other one for Wanderers. I would like to understand how is it going to work, because the minister has indicated that. They are going to construct the stadiums, but uh, the ownership will remain in the, hands of the, in the hands of the government. I want to understand, are those teams going to pay something to the government or it will, it will also be given to the, to the teams to learn it without paying anything? The, the second question uh, is regards the stadium which is, is being constructed or was being constructed at Zingwangwa. Where the stadium is now, uh, originally it was a, a ground, it was a ground for Zingwangwa Secondary School. And there was an arrangement that the, the, the government will construct a ground next to, to where the stadium is for the Nyasa Big Bridge, the next one. But at the moment, there was a, a group of people, if I'm allowed to call it that, who has come to claim the ownership where the government earmarked to, to repress the original ground for Zingwangwa, to construct the ground for Zingwangwa. I hope I'm making sense there. The, the group of people has come to claim that press and they want to use it for uh, cremation. Now, I was wondering, because the ground is just next to the school, and the other side is a stadium. Now, that place, they have taken it over from the government, and they want to use it for cremation. I don't, I don't know how is it going to work. We are the school here, the stadium here, and the other place going for, to be used for cremation. Can the, can the minister explain? If this is the, I wish the Minister of Health was around to tell us, because the cremation is something to do with sadness and the funerals, and this one is a sports, how is it going to die? Can the Minister explain? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Blanton North, Honorable Minister of Sports. Thank you very much, uh, right honorable speaker. I have before me a set of questions 
on the statement I have delivered. Uh, first from uh, Kasungu North. The people of Kasungu North would like to hear from the minister as to whether we can concentrate on one project of the two projects that we have, Griffin Saenda, Indo Sports Complex, or the Aquatic uh, Sports Complex. Madam Speaker, allocating money to one project is possible, provided the money is enough and the funding is timely to complete the project. Madam Speaker, Kasungu North also said that it pains him that there is no tangible progress on the projects in Blantyre, the two stadia. Madam Speaker, I would like to assure the Honorable Member that the Minister is trying his level best to make sure that we make progress and that those projects materialize. Madam Speaker Kasungu North also asked whether government has plans for a national stadium in the north and he cited specifically Mzuzu City. Madam Speaker, I would like to inform the Honorable Member in this House that government indeed has plans to construct a national stadium in Mzuzu. But at the moment, resources are not allowing. Therefore, should resources be available, Madam Speaker, Zuzu National Stadium will be constructed. Madam Speaker, the people of the North. Uh, Honorable Member for Kasungu North, then Rumpi uh, West. It's just a matter of uh, that the second question has had an extension whereby I asked a question to say, can government lose anything if they donate those stadiums to the two teams, Wanderers and Police? Thank you. you Honorable uh, Minister, there's another one from Rumpi West. Yes, Rumpi West to help the floor. Uh, Madam Speaker, I stand on a point of order. Uh, on the point the minister said, maybe has mistakenly quoted a different page. He said government doesn't have money and it has just plans. Madam Speaker, if you look at what is happening in this country, the minister would have been the second person to allow that point to come because the youth from the north would not be happy as they voted this bomb and that all say, at least to have something there. So he would like, I would like him to go back to the drawing table. He has to find the resources and try to come up with some point of order. <laughs> no. Honorable. <laughs> Minister of uh, Sports, Honorable Minister of Trade, you, you, you wanted to raise a, a, a clarification. 
right honorable speaker yes uh, uh, yeah as uh, as honorable ministers you are allowed to make clarification so you want mm -hmm. You have the floor. Right, Honorable Speaker, the point of clarification, I think, is that uh, um, ministers in the House are obliged to give truthful and honest responses, not political and half-truth responses. Therefore, I just wanted to make a clarification that uh, the answer that uh, the Minister of Youth gave is both truthful, very honest, and full of I would say integrity. Something else that uh, my honorable colleague should really take with pride, because the honorable colleague has committed that they'll be looking for resources, and once he has got the resources, all of us know that there's a lot that needs to be done in Zuzu, one of which is the stadium, but we cannot accuse him of not doing enough when he is giving this house a truthful and an honest response that the house deserves. I thought, Rather Honorable Speaker, we should give uh, respect to the deliberations in the House and not over-politicize everything that is said, especially when coming from the ministers. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister of... Uh, Madam Speaker. On, 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 honorable Members, we're only allowed two uh, points of orders when somebody is on the floor. But a point of order can't take more than two or three minutes, Honorable Member, for Rumpi West. N Sorry, but, but, but you, you, you had reason for more than one minute. Hmm? Madam, I think we are so so you, you didn't, you didn't, no, you, were you debating or were you just asking a question? Because you said the point of order and I thought you had finished. Thank you. Proceed, Honorable Member for Rumpi West. But I hope we just, because the point of order is supposed to be one minute and I thought you had more than that. Yes. Mad Thank you, Madam Speaker, for letting me finish my point of order. I would love the minister to find the resources, maintain Mzuzu Stadium by, at all costs, because we have seen people getting stadiums who have come at the second, while you already know Mzuzu Stadium is in a dilapidated state from 2019, 2012, 2021. People from the north are tired about stories. We need that stadium by force, by fire. Honorable Minister of um, Sports. Ma Madam Speaker, let me thank the people of Rumpi West for the sentiments that they have uh, shared with us regarding the situation in Mzuzu about the stadium. Madam Speaker, it is not true that there is nothing being done in Mzuzu for the youth. Because government is constructing the Mzuzu Youth Centre, and I've highlighted in the ministerial statement that the Mzuzu Youth Centre has got several components, including sports facilities, and among us, the sports facilities, there is a football arena. Thank you. Madam Speaker, there was also a question from uh, Kasungu North, who rose on a point of order reminding me that he had asked a question as to whether we can donate the two stadia in Blantyre to the teams, to the proposed teams, so that they can take it from there. Madam Speaker, let me respond in this way. That donation of the two stadia in Blantyre would require proper consultations and approvals. Since there are public facilities and the rest on public land. Madam Speaker, on the questions in the first set, I also have uh, the Zanoth. The people of the Zanoth began by thanking me for visiting their constituency sometime last year at Miami, where he was hosting some sports festivals. 
And the question was whether we can improve maintenance, we can increase funding to improve maintenance to the Bingu National Stadium, it being the only stadium that is being recognized by FIFA and CAF. Madam Speaker, let me say that maintenance of the Bingu National Stadium, the minister is consulting the Ministry of Finance to consider some options. Number one is to increase the funding. Number two is to allow the stadium to retain some funds on its revenue so that those funds could be used to maintain the facility. Another option being considered is to furnish the stadium with rooms to increase revenue base through hiring out of the rooms. Madam Speaker, the Zanoff actually said they have two questions, but on the list it looks like it's four questions. The other question was whether the names Bullets and Wanderers Stadium would be still considered in the light that these facilities are government facilities and therefore they have been called Sochi and Zingwangwa Stadium. Madam Speaker, we have maintained that there will be a special agreement between the government and the users. And some of these, I am certain, will form part of those agreements. Madam Speaker, the fourth question from the Zanoth was on the maintenance of Kamuzu Stadium to the standards that it can be recognized for international competitions. Madam Speaker, on Kamuzu Stadium, the maintenance cost and benefit analysis was done. And it was found out that due to the dilapidated state of the stadium, it is cheaper to demolish the stadium and construct a new one than to rehabilitate Kamuzu Stadium into a condition that it can be used for international competitions. Madam Speaker, I also had a question from Machinga East. The people of Machinga East claim that they heard from the statement that the ministry is also responsible for district sports facilities. Madam Speaker, let me say that uh, I think the honorable member did not hear me well. Because all district sports facilities, they are under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Local Government. 
But being a policyholder and hearing that uh, Machinga district is in need of a stadium, let me assure the honorable member that my ministry will escalate that to the Ministry of Local Government so that it may consider constructing a stadium in Machinga District, specifically Machinga East. Madam Speaker, I also have a question from uh, the people of Zomba Central. And let me concur with the Honorable Minister of Trade and Industry that the Zomba Stadium is being constructed but under the Ministry of Local Government. Therefore, it would be very difficult for my ministry to know as to when the facility would be completed and ready for commissioning. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports. Order. Honorable member for Cholo North, what has gone out of order? North, oh, sorry, Blunt North, sorry. My question has not been attended to, all two, all two of them. Minister, questions uh, from Honorable member for Blunt North? Madam Speaker, my apologies. I thought I had tackled that question because uh, somehow it is relating to one of the questions. Uh, that uh, I think Kasungu North had asked about uh, ownership. The question from uh, the Honorable Member for Blantyre North, in fact, I have one. If there's another one, I think you have to ask again. I noted only one where the Honorable Member is asking whether the, the users will be in an arrangement where they will be paying something as part of the agreement to operate the facilities, the two stadia. Madam Speaker, my response, my quick response to that would be we have not come to that yet. At the moment, government is concentrating on construction. When the right time comes, when the facilities are completed, Madam Speaker, government is going to enter into an agreement, special agreement, with the two proposed teams, Bullets for Zingongo Stadium, Wanderers for Sochi Stadium, as to whether paying something towards use of those facilities will be part of the agreement. I think we'll come to that at the right time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honourable uh, Member. Honourable Hon Member for Blanta North, still on the same question? Yes, because the Minister has indicated that he hasn't he captured the second question. Okay. So he said go? I should remind him. Okay, please and go I'm ahead. And I'm here to remind him. The, the, the second question was, the, the arrangement between the government and the Zimbabwe Secondary School was that where the government is constructing the stadium for Nyasa, there was a ground for Zimbabwe Secondary School. Now, they, they offered them the next press. They created it. In fact, the contractor created the press for, to replace the ground for Zimbabwe Secondary School. Now, after that came a group of people who claimed the ownership of the press to be used for cremation. So I was asking what will happen to, 
to Zimbabwe Secondary School because their ground has been taken up and the press is going to be used for cremation. And I also extended my question that whether it will be proper, this, the cremation is connected to funerals, and this other one is a sports arena. Is it, and the next one is a secondary school. And we know when cremation is happening, there is a smell which comes out. Is it, is it proper to put that place for cremation next to the secondary school? That was my question. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. And I would like to thank the Honorable Member for Brandon for his questions. Let me acknowledge, Madam Speaker, that uh, my ministry has received reports of these circumstances that the Honorable Member is uh, reporting or asking. And these are under investigation by my ministry in conjunction with the Ministry of Lands. And at an appropriate time, Madam Speaker, after the investigations, we'll be able to have a correct answer. Thank you. Thank you. Zimba South. Point of order. Honorable members, we can't just uh, point of orders or proper questions. No, it's a point of order on the response which she has given. Okay, you have the floor, Zimba North. Madam Speaker, when Irum West was requesting for a reference to Muzuzu Stadium, I think the response which was being given was not adequate. And even when the minister was intervening, Minister of Trade, we are not fourth class citizens as northerners. We should be addressed as Malawians. The responses which are coming, it's unfortunate that the Minister of Sports is also coming from the north. He knows the state of affairs. Of right the honorable speaker. In no, 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 no. And no. the state of no, affairs no, 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 no. of the stadium in Mzuzu is beyond the recognition as a stadium. And for somebody just to answer as if you are passing by, it is not proper. And every northerner is crying for that stadium. And for members of parliament, especially Ruby West, to be responded to as if he's a kid. No, we are elected members to represent the people of the north. And if this continues, I am commanding that the north should break away from this country. We can even stand on our own. This is rubbish. MCP no, 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 no. On, on a me, government for on a member for, I don't think it. On a don't member for we are not north. here to play games. On we are member here for, for serious business. Honorable member for Zimba North. Zimba North. Can you please withdraw the word rubbish, Honorable Member from Zimba North? Please withdraw. I gave you time to speak. I don't want to. Please withdraw the word rubbish. Please withdraw. I don't know in what context I've said rubbish. I'm saying for member for Honorable Member from Zimba North. We are better off just withdrawing from this country. Honorable Member from Zimba North. Zimba North. That word, everything you've said, I'm just saying that word rubbish. You know the rules uh, of the house. No, I don't know the context. If you can be played, I can no, understand. No, no, I don't better. want us to start arguing, Honorable Member from Zimba North. Please. Please withdraw just the word rubbish, Honorable Member from Zimba North. I withdraw rubbish. I withdraw the word, but the MCP government. Honorable part... Member from Zimba North, you've withdrawn. Thank you. Question, right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Minister of Trade. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, um, I think the Honorable colleague from Zimba North is not being uh, honest, he's being hypocritical, because if he was uh, making these sentiments uh, with uh, an honest heart, he should first and foremost have said about the 200 million in his constituency, which he has failed to use it for anything tangible that he can point at. So it's easy for him to come and accuse the Minister of Sports about Mzuzu University, which has an MP from Zuzu City. But first and foremost, Madam Speaker, he's being hypocritical because he has not accounted uh, for the 200 million and he cannot point what point, he has point done of order. in his constituency. And he should point not come order. in this house point and start order. blaming oh, people oh, on a national member. development members, when his own constituency point of order. cannot account uh, 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 for his people on, in Zimba North. I'll give you for, what he has done, the for what he has done I'll give with the 20, in the his Zimba North. Talk less of Zuzu City. Talk less talk less of uh, the northern region, but he should start I'll with what he has done after in minister. his own I'll constituency you, because there's nothing Rumpi tangible East. he can show for it and he shouldn't be hypocritical in this house. Right yeah. Honourable Speaker. Uh, point, yeah, of order. Point, of you, order. Uh, point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. 
mics before I recognize you. Don't switch off the mic. Don't switch on the mics, please. Yes, honourable member for uh, I did recognize Rumpi North and then uh, Rumpi East. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, for recognizing uh, the people of Rumpi North to comment on the issue that has been raised by the Minister of Trade. Have order, please, on my right. Order, please. Rumpi North, you have the floor. Uh, Madam Speaker, issues to do with the uh, Mzuzu Stadium are very critical. And uh, I thought that uh, the Minister of Trade should be a little more sensitive when he's responding to these issues, when, or when he's reacting to such issues. We do not want to bring in emotions. But all we're saying is the people of the North, particularly Mzuzu City, deserve a modern stadium. This does not require any emphasis. Much as the, the city has got a member of parliament, but uh, there are times when all of us will get together, because that is where we all reside. So I wanted to put that uh, perspective uh, right on the speaker. Thank you, uh, Rumpi North. Uh, Rumpi East. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker, uh, for giving the people of Rumpi East to be heard. Uh, is it in order, Madam Speaker, that when we raise up issues of the North and importance, then a CDF issue is coming from a Minister of Trade who cannot even reconcile between a 200 million, which we are yet to utilize, and the call for a stadium in the North. Is it in order? Because it's for the people of the North. We are talking about the people of the North and Mzuzu in particular, that it does deserve a stadium. So is it in order for that Minister of Trade to come up and do and issue a statement that is tribalistic? Is it in order? Is it in order for the Minister of Trade to issue a quota system on issues of national development? Is it in order? Is it in order thank for that particular minister to ridicule the Mas, people of the North brother, just because he is from Central Region? We deserve much better than the argument from a minister of trade. I have a respect for him because he's more like a brother to me. And for him to ridicule the people of the North, I think he has to withdraw. Because 200 million is for everybody as a member of parliament. It's not for Mzuzu Stadium. It's not for a stadium for the North. I respect that one. I respect the minister, and I will continue to respect him. But he has no, he, he doesn't have to attack the people of the North. Honourable member. That's because he has the head. Honourable member for. Because of the people of the North. Honourable member for Rumpi, Rumpi West. Rumpi West. Rumpi West, can I have order? Salima, no, 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 no. Honorable member, I am chairing, not you, Blanton North. Rumpi West, room, honorable members. Honorable, honorable member for Rumpi West. Rumpi West. Rumpi West, Rumpi West, Rumpi West. Rumpi West. Rumpi West, Rumpi West. Rumpi West. Rumpy West, Rumpy West, Rumpy West, can I have order, please? Order, honorable member for Rumpy West. Honorable members, can we have order, please? Honorable members, let's not put emotions in, in this matter. I know it's an important matter, but let us not put emotions in it. I know it is an important matter, but let's not be emotive about the same. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving the people of Mzimba South to ask a question to the Minister of Sports. Uh, the question to the Minister of Sports. Uh, oh, Honourable Member for... Statement. Sorry, Honourable Minister of Sports, you wanted to... Honourable member, Madam Speaker, please. I was personally reflected on 
by the honorable member from Zimba North, whereby he was insinuating that myself being a northerner and a minister responsible for sports, I can stoop so low and give such a response. I feel like honorable, right honorable speaker, this should not have come from the honorable member because this is divisive and unparliamentary. I thank you. Thank you. Honorable members, can I ask, can we proceed, as I've said, let's not put emotions into a very important matter, but let's take out the emotions. Let's just debate in a normal way. Let's not put emotions, but yes, um, Mzimba South. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving the people Mzimba South to ask a question on the statement that has been given by uh, the Minister of Sports. Uh, first, let me declare that uh, I'm one of the uh, fan of Big Bullets, and I, stu I started supporting Big Bullets a long time ago. And I'm very happy that he, uh, there were allocated stadiums that they should be built. But the question that I wanted to ask to the minister, I was also listening to what my colleague from Mashinga East was complaining, to say that Mashinga doesn't have a stadium, uh, but he, I wanted to find out, Blanta alone, if we construct these two stadiums, Bullets and Wanderers, they will have two stadiums. Two stadiums. Stadiums. Uh, st stadia. They will have, they'll have more than five stadiums in Blanta. Whilst my sister there is complaining that they don't have any stadium. Uh, is there no possibility that we can agree as a country that let other districts like Mashinka benefit first from the stadium projects before we allocate a lot of stadiums to one district. Like also what Lumpy West was just say, saying, we can decide to say, instead of constructing these two stadiums in Branta, let's have one in Mashinga, let's have one uh, located at uh, Mzuzu, uh, Mzuzu City. In that way, we will allocate resources equally, rather than uh, having a lot of stadiums in one district. But at the same time, Madam Speaker, uh, Big Bullets, as the, me, I'm also the supporter, I know it very well. Right now, it's a private company. Uh, it's owned by a person. It's owned by a person. And Wanderers also is a private company. It's owned by a person. Why, why should we construct stadiums owned by private individuals, private companies? Let's be realistic as a, as a, as a country. There are a lot of districts that do have stadiums. There's no way we should be allocating a lot of stadiums in one district. Let's take one, one stadium to Mashinga. This other stadium should come to Zeus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Member for um, Zimba South. Yes, what has gone out of order? <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker. Is it in order for the Member of Parliament, who have just resumed his seat, to to misread this house, that Blanta has five stadiums. Can he, can he mention the five stadiums? Because as far as we know, Blanta has only a Gamsu stadium. Is it, is it in order to, to, to mislead this house? Can he mention the five stadiums? We will have, we will have. Understand the English word, we will have, uh, 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 Yes. We will have, uh, thank, we will have. Th th thank you. Honorable member for Blanta North, I think he, it was clear he said we will have. But so at that, the moment, no, 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 Thank you. Honorable member, honorable member for Mzuzu Central, um, Cheo South, Cho, sorry, Cholo South, um, Nkada Be Central, Zomba Malosa. Yes.
Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you so much for recognizing Zuzu City to ask the Minister of Youth and Sports a question. Madam Speaker, much as we appreciate the construction of Mzuzu City Youth Center, the project is not moving. It has stalled. It's no longer moving. People in Mzuzu, especially the youth, are on my neck. When will this project finish? And uh, as my colleagues have said, Mzuzu Stadium is very, very important. I, I mean, uh, apart from the youth center, I'm also speaking about the Mzuzu Stadium. Mzuzu Stadium is very, very important. We last watched international game during Kamuzubanda. We need a stadium instantly so that the people of the north can also enjoy. We cannot be moving all the way from north up to south to watch football. We want international games to be played as well in Mzuzu. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Amen. Thank you, Honorable Member for Mzuzu Central, Cholo South. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity to ask the Minister of Sports a supplementary question. Madam Speaker, uh, hearing what the Minister uh, has said in his uh, submission, he has really lamented uh, about lack of funding to his ministry. So I just want to find out from him is he asking this house to give him funds for his ministry to run well, or he is lamenting that the Minister of Finance is not funding his ministry, what was already allocated by this house. So I just want to find out from him what is he saying about lack of funding, lack of funding. Is it about funding from the parliament or the ministry is not funding. My second question, Madam Speaker, is about the Kamuzu Stadium, he has already said. He has clearly uh, indicated that this should be demolished. And if there are those plans, when the ministry is starting constructing a new modern stadium, in a blunt tire. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Nkata be central. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for recognizing Nkata uh, be central to add or to ask a question to the Honorable Minister of Youth Development and Sports on the statement which the Honorable Minister has presented in the House. Madam Speaker, uh, I want to remind the Honourable Minister that uh, I am speaking from knowledge. This is the, uh, the former Minister which took the national team to Angola 2010. So I am asking from knowledge, Honourable Minister, Honourable Minister, sir, why is Gabadinho Muhango not being invited to the national team? My first question. The second question, Madam Speaker, Madam. The second question, Madam Speaker, Madam. Honorable Minister, uh, can you say something on the presidential initiative on sports? That program was introduced by the former presidents in order to identify talent in the rural areas in order to support the national team. Where are we on that pro program? the presidential initiative on sports. Where are we, Honorable Minister, sir? My last question, Madam Speaker, Madam. Honorable Minister, sir, what is the procedure when it comes to the identification or recruitment or hiring of a national team coach? Because I'm asking this question, Madam Speaker, Madam, uh, just two days ago, last week, we were embarrassed at, the, uh, at our own home ground by 
by Burundi. And we were scoring our own goals there. The, <laughs> the team was scoring its own goals. When, when a football team, Madam Speaker, Madam, is scoring its own goals, is that about money? Is that about, money? Is that about finances? Is that about resource? Then you say, we have no money. Is that about money, Madam? The question I want to ask. The, que the, the, the question I want to ask, Madam Speaker, Madam, are we saying the, honor, the, the national team coach we have now is the best among the locals? Is he better than Peter Mponda? Is he better than Meke Mwase? Is he better than the locals that we have? You are seeing the national team coach putting a, 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 right, a right defender on the left, a, right, a left striker on the right. The team is calling its own goals. <laughs> is that about money, madam? So the honorable minister, sir, can you respond to those questions? Thank you, madam Thank speaker. You, uh, madam. The central. Last one, uh, Zomba. Was it Zomba? Malosa. Zomba Malosa. Uh, thanks so, thank you so much, uh, Madam Speaker, for giving people of Zomba Malosa to ask them a supplementary question to the Minister of Sports. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm happy that the Minister of Sports was uh, our former chair for Transport and Public Works, and I'm sure that when I'm asking this question, he's going to take that into account. My question is dwelling more on the three projects uh, that he mentioned, which are happening here in Lilongwe, the Aqua Center, and the Griffin Saenda. Uh, these three projects, when visited, they are not in good shape. They were built with low uh, quality uh, resources, and they were actually, before even finishing them, they were already falling down. Now, I was following uh, his statement where he said that PPDA has given them uh, no objection and now they are getting uh, an addendum. Now, uh, my question is, are they trying to fix on this uh, law substance uh, 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 buildings? Because the, the things, the, the buildings that are being built now, they are substandard. And now for them to get money, to start funding a project, things that are already falling before finishing, I'm really scared because back home in Zomba Malosa, we have got so many grounds that would have wanted the government to invest this money in my constituency, like at Songani, they build a, a stadium there. My people will appreciate because I will be there and see, uh, supervise that uh, maybe whatever is going there is with uh, high cost. But this, uh, this, uh, the, 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 these three structures that we are being talked about here, they are falling. Even the aqua center, if you go see it, the swimming pool, it's all down, the bricks are all down. So I would really want to know, what are uh, these no objection? Are, this, are they on the same uh, buildings or something different? They have maybe done something, they have restructured everything. Thanks so much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Zomba Malosa. Honorable Minister, Honorable Member for Chitipa, uh, Wenya, you're rising to ask a question? Uh, okay, I had recognized this team, uh, I'm sorry, these members. After that, then I'll get another round. Yes, Honorable Government Chief Whip, you're rising? Yes, Madam uh, Speaker, I am rising to provide information, and I was making some inquiries on the um, questions that were coming on the floor uh, as regards to um, Mzuzu Stadium. So I, I want to make this information available to the House that um, government is working with the Minister of Local Government to actually work with Mzuzu City Council to refurbish uh, Mzuzu Stadium, but also have already asked uh, for, from Zuzu City Council to, uh, for a proper um, uh, location for a new stadium. And I thought this should be made available to the House because this is actual information that is, uh, government is working through the Minister of Local Government, which the Minister of Sports uh, may not have that information. So this information 
has just come because I was consulting and they, they have assured me that this is what's on the cards. So I thought I should provide this information. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Honorable Minister, Honorable Member, you're rising on a... On, on the response from the minister, or sorry, uh, well, because you're supposed, if it's a point of order, it has to be what has just been spoken. So if it's on, what is, sorry, on, honourable member. Honourable Member, is it uh, Blunt, Chilazuru uh, East? Yes, you have the Thank you, Madam Speaker, for recognising the people of Chilazuru East. Madam Speaker, is it in order that members of this House keep on asking questions to different ministries who are not responsible, whose core mandate is totally different from whatever the, uh, they are being asked? I'll give a, a, a typical example. Last time we had the Minister of Justice, for example. People were questioning him about construction of uh, 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 courts in their constituencies. Yet we have the Ministry of Transport and Public Infrastructure, which is the responsible ministry for all public infrastructures in Malawi. If you are talking about all these stadiums, the Minister of Sports, their core mandate is not about construction. The Minister of Agriculture, their core mandate is not about construction. But we keep on referring these construction matters to ministers that are not relevant. I'm happy the Minister of Public Works here, Public Infrastructure, has risen to clarify issues concerning construction. So can you guide the House which ministry is responsible for a public infrastructure? Because when you talk about every, everything in terms of construction, Madam Speaker, falls under Minister of works, I mean, the transport and public infrastructure. Yet, we ask many for agriculture, whose command is about agriculture, not construction. Are we doing the things right in this house? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. I think, I think uh, uh, that's a question that I think I said earlier, that the issues that I think are cross-cutting, in this case, members were asking because of the statement that was given by the Honourable Minister of uh, Sports, but indeed uh, we still have issues that should go directly to Minister of Transport. But in terms of the uh, policy order on sports, it is the Minister of Sports. In the construction, yes, the Minister of Transport should be uh, responsible, but it's one of those things that I think are in both areas. Uh, I don't know, Honourable Minister, uh, but I think it's, it's one of those things that are probably cross-cutting issues of stadium where the construction should be somewhere else, but in terms of the policy on sports, it is supposed to be the Minister of Sports. So transport, I don't know if you... Mm -hmm. no, no, that, that's, that's in order, Madam Speaker. I would like to agree with the Honourable Member. That is why I rose, because what usually happens is that... Um, when it comes to the actual construction, uh, even ministries work with us. We work with them, number one, to find out what they are looking for as uh, our clients in this case. But as far as the actual construction, the technicalities of everything else, it falls under our ministry. Uh, but that's why I was, I was giving this information. In this case, I, I say that we are working with Minister of Local Government on Mzuzu, Stadium, and that's that's what that's the information I was giving in this case. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Honourable Member. Uh, did the Minister respond to the questions? No. Yes, Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honourable Speaker. I have with me a question from uh, the people of um, Zimba South who, first of all, declared that uh, they are a fan of big bullets. And uh, their question was that uh, they would like the minister to allocate some of the stadium 
that are being constructed in Blantyre to other districts like Machinga. Madam Speaker, like I responded um, initially, that um, district sports facilities fall under the Ministry of Local Government. As much as it is important to have sports facilities in the districts, it is equally important that we have sports facilities at national level that are to the standards whereby they can be able to host international competitions. Madam Speaker, the people of Mzuzu City decried the stalling on the project of Mzuzu Youth Center. Madam Speaker, let me agree to some extent with the Honorable Member that Mzuzu Youth Center project temporarily restored due to issues to do with the supervision of the work whereby the National Construction Industry Council had interest in the quality of the works that are being done at Mzuzu Youth Center. And they had their reservations that the contractor should continue, should proceed with the construction which issues have been discussed and resolved to the extent that the contractor has been granted a go-ahead to do the works. Madam Speaker, Muzuzu City has also reminded us of those glorious days under His Excellency Dr. Banda's leadership, where he can testify that Mzuzu used to enjoy international games at Mzuzu Stadium. And this is what everyone in Mzuzu and the North is looking forward to. Madam Speaker, as we have already explained, that government indeed has plans and it is working on those plans to ensure that we have a state-of-the-art stadium in Mzuzu. But in my statement, I also indicated that the project of Mzuzu Youth Center has a component of a mini stadium in Mzuzu, a project which is ongoing at the moment. And Madam Speaker, we have requested the Mzuzu City to allocate land under this project where this facility can be constructed and we are still waiting for that. Madam Speaker, the people of Cholo South are asking my ministry whether we are looking for finances from the Ministry of Finance to do all these projects. And they also asked whether, when are we going to demolish the Camoso Stadium? Madam Speaker, the Minister is not necessarily looking for finances per se as it has been put by the Honourable Member. But for the projects to be included in the PSIP, Madam Speaker, government has to have 
solid assurances that resources will be available for that particular project. So when we, when we say at the moment there are no resources for a particular project, it doesn't mean that we want the finance minister to fund the ministry. Madam Speaker, on demolishing the Kamuzo Stadium, let me say that at the moment, the Kamuzo Stadium is still in that condition where it is able to host local games. And considering the fact that we don't have alternative football facilities in Blantyre, we are still keeping the Kamuzo Stadium and maintaining it just to make sure that we are able to use it for our local competitions. Madam Speaker, the Honourable Member from Katabe Central, every time he asks a question, you feel like running away. He speaks with a very loud voice, very intimidating. I almost, the other day when he rose on a point of order regarding the loss, the defeat of our national team to Burundi, he was on top of his voice as if he was scolding me. But anyway, I understand this is how the Honorable Member from Harabe Central expresses himself. And he, this afternoon, he is reminding us that he was once a minister of sports. And during his tenure, he is so proud that he managed to take our national team to Angola. And now the question is, why are we leaving out Gabadinho, Muhango? Well, Madam Speaker, let me say that my statement was to do with infrastructure. It's not necessarily about who goes on the pitch to play for flames. So, Madam Speaker, I am cognizant of the fact that I am live to Malawians and I don't want to be misquoted and the comment on matters that are well handled by the Football Association of Malawi and the coach. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Member from Hatabe Central also inquired about the presidential initiatives on sports. Madam Speaker, we have learned that the Presidential Initiatives on Sports is a great program and that the Honourable Member would like to see it come back. Well, let me assure the Honourable Member that I have taken his comments and his plea and I will take it further to see how the presidential initiative on sports can come back. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Member from Karabi Central also asked on the procedure of recruiting a national, coach, a national football coach. Again, Madam Speaker, my statement was on infrastructure projects in the ministry. Nonetheless, let me say that 
basically the national football coach is recruited by government because gets resources from the government for his remuneration. However, at the moment, government has delegated the signing of the contract of the national football team coach to the Football Association of Malawi. Madam Speaker, my esteemed honorable member for Zomba Malosa also asked me a question and she kept on saying the facilities that government is constructing in the name of Griffin Sayenda and the aquatic sports complex are of low standards basing on what they saw when they visited the sites. Madam Speaker, let me say that um, this is not um, a strange allegation or statement. It's not new. We have heard it before. But the truth of the matter is that the two facilities hosted the Region 5 Games in 2022, December, well before completion. Now the games are gone. The construction has to continue. Therefore, whatever was temporarily fixed in there to allow the games to take place has been dismantled. And this is what people are seeing as to things falling apart. But essentially, the thing is, these are ongoing projects, works are still ongoing, and therefore these are construction sites. Madam Speaker, I thank you. Thank you very much, honorable members. Can honorable member for Cholo South, uh, um, yes, thank what has gone out of order? Yeah, thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for giving uh, Cholo South to um, uh, on point of order. Madam Speaker, is it in order that the minister, the minister who has in his statement said that uh, the following projects are not uh, being uh, completed because of uh, funding. And now he is coming out in his response uh, that uh, he does not want uh, funding from the minister. Is it in order to contradict himself in that way? Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Zomba Malosa? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll you. give the minister the floor. Yeah, thanks okay. so much, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, is it in order that the minister should say that uh, whatever we saw when we visited was just temporary for the regional games when we actually saw cracks inside uh, the building and he knows it very well. Uh, uh, they had put a floor with so many cracks, even the building, the Griffin Center had so many cracks because we are talking of uh, taxpayers' money here. Uh, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not being constructed by, by the local people, it's government constructing. And we believe that when government is constructing, should construct something that is good, uh, something that is good to, 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 to people's eyes. So is it in order that he should say that those things that we saw were temporary when we all know that they were uh, permanent things? Because the temporary things, we saw them, but... Uh, what I'm talk, trying to talk, that's why I said that time he was the chair of our Committee of Transport and Public Works. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Zumba Malusa. Honorable Minister of Transport and Government, Chief Whip, you're rising. Yes, Madam, to, I'm rising to clarify, I think, the issues of construction. Members should understand that uh, when a project is still with a contractor, 
uh, it means that the contractor is liable for every photo of defects that is on that contract. And so what happens is that uh, before the hand, even after handing it over, we have what we call a defects liability period, and that's a one-year period where the contractor is supposed to make good any form of uh, uh, defects. So I'm not standing here to say that there couldn't be any defects, but if there were defects, then they must know that it's not necessarily the responsibility of government. The contractor still has the contract, and it's within that defects liability period, he must make good that. So the honorable member can be assured that if there are any form of defects, those will be made good, because that's how the contracts work. Thank you. Honorable members, uh I know there's honorable member for Chitipa when you're rising. I will recognize you immediately after health uh, break. Honorable members, it is nine minutes to four. I now suspend proceedings for health break. We shall resume sitting at 21 minutes past the four. House suspended.
Zodiac Television.